Welcome to Code Corner from Mayfield Renewables. Uh, my name is Ryan Mayfield, and today we're going to talk about supply side connections for our PV systems, specifically talking about 705.11 A and B. And so 705.11 is where we're going to find in 2020 our requirements for making connections on the supply side. And real quick, let, you know, just define the supply side. What we're talking about is the supply side of the main overcurrent device. And so uh, very often you'll hear it referred to as a line side tap or things like that, but technically we're, they're supply side connections. And so trying to use that language that consistently is important. And code has now given us some very good and um, some good rules on how to make these connections where we didn't have them before. So let's let's jump in and talk about a couple of these. And 705.11a is what we're going to uh, focus in on first. but and what it's saying is that an electronic, excuse me, an electric power production source, such as a PV system, uh, that's a generic electric power production source is a generic term, but it's something that applies to our PV systems. If it's connected on the supply side of the service means, then we have to go through 705.11 A through E. And so A is where we're focused. And what it's saying is that the sum of the power source continuous current output ratings on a service other than those controlled by a um, power control system. So that's defined in 705.13. We're not gonna talk about that right now. We're just going to talk about you know, traditional PV inverters connected to the supply side of a, of a main breaker, main disconnect, I should say. Uh, the sum of those shall not exceed the ampacity of the service conductors. So if you are looking, and we have some images that we're gonna look at so that it kind of helps set the uh, set a picture, make it a little easier to, to digest. Uh, but what this is saying is that if you're, if you have a PV system, you're connecting to a service, you can't exceed what those, those service conductors are rated for. Makes perfect sense. Those conductors are rated for a certain amount. And that's what we're gonna have to stick to uh, with what we're adding our PV system onto. And then B, we're gonna uh, have it also talk about an image here. And this is one that over the years, uh, it was never directly referenced. And so now we, it's nice that we have this very distinct and, and direct reference to this. But what it's saying is that the size of the conductors from the, from the point of interconnection to the first overcurrent device, we have to size it in, in accordance with 705.28, which you go look at 705.28, it's a lot, it's basically the same as what we're sizing our inverter output circuit current, uh, our inverter output conductors for. So not a whole lot new there, but it's just, it's a different reference versus 690. And, but it says, and in no case smaller than six gauge copper or four gauge aluminum. And then we have to install it per some of these service rules. So this is one, uh, some inspectors would, would call this out uh, because it's in 230. Uh, and others would not. And so this is it's just nice that we have this definitive section. And so a lot of times your supply side connections, you're doing it on commercial systems, larger systems. So this is going to be a moot point. But there are cases where you're going to do a supply side connection on a residential application. And so having this, I know I have to have six gauge copper um, from point of connection over to my first overcurrent device, regardless of the size, it's helpful just to have that and know what that is. And in reality, you know, even if it's a, a small, small system, maybe it's only a 30 amp or 40 amp overcurrent device, you're oversizing wires, yes, but it's a it's a short run, and so it's not a it's not a huge cost implication. And, and we're going to look at that here in a minute. So, 705.11a, what this is talking about is I have a certain number of inverters. I have, uh, again, this is a commercial type application. I have a number of inverters. Uh, I'm combining them all together in a single AC combiner panel, going through a fuse disconnect, and I'm doing a supply side connection. And so what this is just saying is that the, the sum of our, uh, the continuous output currents of our inverters can exceed the rating of the service. And so very often what you should do is you need to go and you need to look at what those conductors are. What is the actual rating of those service conductors? Um, you know, you need to look at what is the connection, what is, what's the main breaker, what's the main panel, all that. But we also need to look at those conductors because that's what you're making that connection to. And so sometimes that's requiring 
checking with the utility, uh, what are those, what are the service conductors rated for? So you make sure that you're not putting too much amperage on those. But by and large, if you have a thousand amp service, a thousand amp panel, a thousand amp breaker, you have a thousand amp conductors. And so you would be able to interconnect up to the rating of what that service is. So as long as you are up to, but not exceeding that, you can do, um, you can have those interconnections like that. So in this case, we have 800 amps on a thousand amp service. So we are less than what those service conductors are rated for. And so this is a, a great way to get more PV onto a building or onto a, onto a service than you would otherwise uh, you know, through a load side connection or something like that. And um, it just allows for putting in a bigger system uh, and connecting with the utility uh, for the, the customer's benefit. And then 70511B, here's an image. So we have, a, you know, we have some conductors. These are um, maybe obviously very, you know, larger than uh, six gauge, you know, parallel runs. And so these are going to be greater than one ought to begin with uh, per other code rules. But just an image um, just showing you, you know, we have to have our conductors properly sized. Uh, we're going to talk about in a future code corner talking about these connections, uh, what their ratings have to be, uh, field listing, all that kind of stuff. So all of those would apply, uh, but making sure that your conductors are large enough in order to meet that code requirement. So those are the first two sections of 705.11. We'll, in future code corners, we'll talk about some of the other sections, how to apply those. And what we also will have, we have on our website, our blogs kind of go through this a little bit more. And so if you want to go look at some specific examples of how to apply these, encourage you to go look at that. And the other thing is uh, we have these images that we're using are from our group classes that you can learn about on our website, as well as our design service um, offerings. And that's at mayfield.energy.